Hi everyone, welcome to 3.5 Monetary Policy. This is our first in-depth look at a macroeconomic policy. First, we'll go with definitions. So monetary policy is the changing of the money supply and interest rates by central banks in order to influence aggregate demand and, and therefore the macroeconomic objectives. And interest rates are expressed quite simply as either the cost of borrowing money or the reward for saving money. Now, what's a central bank? A central bank exists for every currency. Australia has the Reserve Bank of Australia, the US has the Federal Reserve, and the Eurozone has the European Central Bank. So that's for all the countries that use the Euro as their currency. Uh, now, in addition to implementing monetary policy, which is as above, a couple of other things they do is that they're the regulator of the, of the commercial bank, so they, they set the rules, and they're also the banker to the government. Now, this next part almost feels like an aside to monetary policy, but it's, it's in the course, so we've got to make sure we know it. We look quickly at what real interest rates are. Given what we've seen in the course already, I think you have a fair idea of what this means, but let's see. So real interest rate is, is uh, just interest rates adjusted for inflation. So let's say the nominal interest rate on my savings account is 2.5%. If I save $10,000 for a year, I earn $250, right? Oh. Not really. So while the interest rate is working to grow my savings, inflation at the same time is working to erode the value of my savings. So the real interest rate takes out the inflation rate. In this example, if inflation is 2%, then the real interest rate is only 0.5%. This means that when we take inflation into account, the real return on my savings is only $50. So this, this part is just all about understanding that inflation erodes the value of money. Okay, back to monetary policy. There are a number of goals that monetary policy aims to reach. First, they want low and stable inflation. Uh, we've already seen why this is important. Low and stable inflation is the primary aim of a central bank. And the Reserve Bank of Australia has a stated aim, so they'll say this publicly, of two to three percent inflation. While reaching that inflation goal, they also aim for low unemployment, reduced business cycle fluctuations, which by achieving will also lead to a stable economic environment. And external balance is an additional goal, but we'll come back to this much later in the course, ideally once we know what external balance means. Now, for how monetary policy works, Remember from the definition that it shifts aggregate demand. Which component is it going to affect? It will affect consumption. So if interest rates rise, then everyone who has a mortgage, a home loan, will have to pay more each month. This is income that they can no longer spend, so consumption will fall. It's also going to cost more to take out a new loan so people who want to borrow for, say, a car, they might settle for buying a less expensive car. Uh, the value of new loans taken out will therefore fall. And again, there'll be that reduction in consumption. Interest rates are also the reward for saving. So if you increase the reward, people will do more of it. That will save more money. Increase the return, you increase the savings. Therefore, they're also, that's money that they are not spending, so consumption will fall. I think it's relatively straightforward to see that when interest rates are lowered, the reverse will happen. Consumption will increase. Right? So we just see those things happening in reverse. Okay. Investment is also affected. So, if interest rates are raised, the cost of borrowing money increases and firms have to reevaluate their investment decisions. Can that restaurant borrow $200,000 to go all out on the new kitchen or with the new high interest rates, will they have to cut back? Investment will not be as high as it was before. Conversely, when interest rates are cut, 
firms may feel that they can really splash out as their repayments are going to be less, investment will increase. Now, how does the monetary policy work? What we're gonna do is show how it works. It's an increase in aggregate demand. We know this, they're generally gonna do it when we're well below uh, the full employment level of output. And I've forgotten my LRAS label, oops. That would lose me a mark in the exam perhaps. So monetary, uh, expansionary monetary policy is going to expand the economy. That's it's gonna increase consumption, increase investment when interest rates are lowered. Sometimes called easy monetary policy as well. So it's gonna look like that, right? Pretty straightforward. We'll also look at contractionary, sometimes called tight monetary policy. This is when interest rates are raised. What we would expect to see is a decrease in consumption, decrease in investment, this therefore leading to aggregate demand shifting to the left. So that's how it works. The, the diagram I think is an easy one. So that's nice for us. Now the goals of it. Okay, if we refer back to our goals, we can see that central banks can get to that two to three percent Goldilocks level of inflation by adjusting the interest rate. Contractionary monetary policy will keep inflation from getting too high, while expansionary monetary policy helps us avoid that damaging deflation that we saw. We don't want to get into that deflationary spiral. Uh, in terms of unemployment, we can see that expansionary monetary policy is going to have more people spending, therefore high real GDP, more people needed to be employed to do that production. Okay. With regards to reducing business cycle fluctuations and promoting a stable economic environment, we can see how monetary policy is going to do that. So the fluctuations and instability reduce confidence, which can lead to these sharp falls in activity that we see in our typical business cycle diagram. If it's getting out of control, uh, growing too fast, uh, it could be headed for a fall. So the central bank can step in with contractionary monetary policy. So they'll, they'll sort of change the trajectory of that business cycle. Okay, so this is what it, the blue, I guess, represents what it would be without any intervention. The red is with central bank intervention. Uh, likewise, to avoid the damaging recessions that we have, they can also lower the interest rate. So we don't want those deep troughs. We, we want it to be nice and smooth. So the expansionary monetary policy will stimulate economic activity and fix that up. On the whole, what we're looking for is that, that smoother line of steadily increasing real GDP. We'll look at some evaluation points now. The strength of monetary policy is its quick implementation. The Reserve Bank of Australia meet regularly on the first Tuesday each month, and this here is the governor of the Reserve Bank of Australia, Philip Lowe. And when the central bank changes the interest rate, when they, when they meet that once a month, the commercial banks will often start passing that on to customers straight away on that same day. So if we think about that in contrast, if there were major changes to government spending and taxes, which is what we call fiscal policy, then that would require significant planning. Here, that's not necessary. It can, it can happen very quickly. Uh, this leads to another advantage, which I've already put up. Uh, it's incremental, flexible, and easily reversible. So changes to interest rates are usually only 0.25%, and these can easily be reversed if the circumstances change. So this allows the bank to fine tune the economy towards those macroeconomic objectives that we've looked at. Also in Australia and most countries, the central bank is independent of the government. Here's a quote from the Reserve Bank of Australia's charter. And this independence means that policy decisions are done in 
economic rather than political interests. The, the central bank should, should be apolitical, essentially. Now to a couple of constraints of monetary policy. Uh, what have we got here? Yeah, first, I want you to draw cost push inflation or stagflation. So just pause and do that. Okay, here we go. That was quick. You would have drawn this. Uh, so we're seeing high inflation. Generally, that, that's our primary aim of monetary policy is to be on top of inflation. So that would say, let's do some contractionary monetary policy. That's going to look like this, shifting AD to the left. Um, it's gotten the price level back to normal, which is good. But look what it's doing to real GDP and therefore employment. It's not a great response. So that's not going to work. So let's see, maybe they can fix that low unemployment, low real GDP by having expansionary monetary policy. Let's see what happens there. Um, yeah, we get back to full employment, but look at inflation. It's made inflation worse than it already was. So what we're really seeing here is that monetary policy isn't particularly effective for supply side issues. It's a demand side policy. It, it affects, it can, can correct the, the fluctuations in demand most effectively. Okay, another constraint that we've seen in recent years is that with interest rates around the world so close to zero, there's actually limited expansionary monetary policy available. So here are some interest rates, international interest rates as of August 2021. So there's not much room to move with those. They can't lower them much further. Uh, at times, these central banks have been described as having no bullets left in the chamber, I guess. It's a bit of an analogy. And finally, expansionary monetary policy can lack effectiveness. Think about what we've learned about recessions. If everything's going bad, consumers and businesses are going to lack confidence in the economy, in the future. They're going to stop spending. For the monetary policy to work, though, we need consumers and businesses to spend when interest rates are lowered. Sometimes low rates just aren't enough to get this happening. For this reason, monetary policy has been described as a great break on the economy when interest rates are raised because it takes money out of people's hands, but they're a poor accelerator when rates are lowered trying to stimulate activity. Okay, uh, that's it. Make sure you've taken the notes that you need and we will do more in class.